Hello, my most amazing artist. I hope you are having an awesome day today. Welcome back to our teacup project. Last week we drew these really cool stacking teacups using ellipse shapes and different lines and patterns on our mugs. So we have our drawing done. If you did your drawing in pencil, then you need to go ahead and outline it with a Sharpie and erase any pencil lines so that your drawing is nice and neat and ready for color. So to color this, you can do a variety of different techniques. For me, I'm gonna use an oil pastel for the background behind my teacups. And for my teacups, I'm gonna use my favorite marker painting technique. However, you could do marker painting or you could use watercolor paint. You could color this whole thing using crayons or colored pencils. You can get creative with what materials you have today to color in your artwork. Since I'm using oil pastel in my background, I have my color chosen. I wanna have this be an orange background, but you can do any colors that you want to today. I have a good variety of colored markers, and since I am going to do marker painting, I also have a cup of water and a paintbrush, and of course, a messy mat under my work. And that's everything that I'm gonna use today, but feel free to experiment with whatever materials you'd like to. Since I'm gonna be painting my cups, I wanna go ahead and do my background first because if my cups are wet, then it's gonna be really hard for me to do the background. But what I'm doing is I'm taking my oil pastel and I'm actually using the side of it. You can do the same technique with a crayon too. You just need to take the wrapper off of your crayon or your oil pastel and we're gonna use the side of it instead of the top. By using the side of your oil pastel, it adds a really cool texture to your background. So usually you might use it like this and where it's kind of dark it does have a little bit of a texture but not as much as when you use this side it adds a really cool kind of rough looking texture and that is exactly what I want for my background you do not have to do this for your background but it is an option for you if you'd like to experiment with the side of your oil pastel or side of your crayon today it's okay if some of this gets onto my teacups I'm not too worried about it I'm just trying to go around, take my time, take as much time as I need to. I'm also going all the way to the edges of my paper. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this for the rest of my background and then I'll be right back to show you how I'm gonna color my teacups. I just finished adding my beautiful orange oil pastel in the background of my teacups. And if this is a technique that you would like to try um, for the first time, then you might wanna practice on another piece of paper first so that you can learn how to use your oil pastel and what kind of strokes you might wanna use. Do you wanna go side to side? Do you wanna go up and down? Um, it's really good to practice a new technique before you put it on your final artwork. So I definitely recommend doing that if this is something you're interested and doing. So I'm gonna set my oil pastel off to the side. I'm gonna bring over my markers because I am ready to use them. And what I'm gonna do is I'm simply going to just use my markers and I'm gonna start coloring in all of these sections. I'm not gonna use the water yet. I'll use that after I finish coloring in all of my shapes and patterns and all my lines that I've used as well. I wanna add color to most of this. You can have some lighter areas by adding just a little bit of marker in that area, or you could have darker areas by adding more marker. So I want these hearts to be pretty dark, so I'm gonna color the whole thing in. Maybe I want this teacup to be like a light green color, so I'll just do a little bit of green here and there, maybe on the side, so it looks like there's shadow around the edges of my teacup, and I'll just do a little bit here and there. You don't have to color the whole entire thing in if you want lighter colors, but if you want your colors to be really dark, then you don't wanna leave a lot of white space while you are coloring with your markers. Remember, you don't have to do this technique that I'm doing right now. You could color this using anything that you want to. I did add some liquid inside of my teacups, and I think I want that to be coffee, so I'm gonna use a brown. I'm just gonna color some brown in there. I'm not too worried about filling in all of the white spaces because I know when I add water to these washable markers, that color is going to bleed into my paper and it'll cover any white spaces that I have left. All right, so I'm gonna speed this part up and I'm just gonna color the majority of my teacups and then I'll be right back to show you the very last step. 
Just finished adding color to the majority of my teacups. I have left some white space because I'm going to add water in a second. Um, but I wanted to let you guys know that if you want to do this technique, then feel free to like layer your colors if you want to add like shadows. So on this red teacup right here, maybe I want to add some blue on the sides to add some darker areas. And when red and blue mix, it'll make kind of a violet color. So you can try to mix and match and layer your colors if this is the technique that you want to go for or you can just do one layer of color that's totally up to you but now we are ready to start adding water so I'm gonna start up here at the first teacup on the very top and we're just gonna get a little bit of water at a time I'm just gonna start adding water in one section at a time. We don't want to add water over across this entire thing because then all of our colors that we just added are going to blend together. So I just want to do a green section. I'm not even going to try to touch the brown right now. I'll do the brown in a minute. If I was to add water to this green section and my coffee inside of my teacup, then that brown would mix in with my green. And I don't really want that to happen. So I'm going to take my time and I'm going to paint one section at a time. Okay, so I did that section. Now I'm ready to paint water over top of my coffee. You don't have to do coffee. You don't have to do tea. Maybe you want to add apple juice inside of your teacup. So you would use like a golden color. Or maybe you want it to be juice. So you might have cherry juice or something and it would be a red color. You can add any drink in your teacups that you want to. I just really like coffee, so I chose to fill my teacups with coffee. If your colors do start blending together, it's not the end of the world. Um, just try your best to go around each of these shapes. So I'm trying not to get water in the red sections right now. I'm trying only to add water to the green section. I'll add water to my hearts and my zigzag in just a minute. But remember, we just wanna do one section at a time. Okay, I think I'm done with my green section. So now I can add some water to my red. By the way, I'm not adding a lot of water. I'm just adding the tiniest little bit in each section. Now, some of my red just blended into my green. I'm not too worried about it. I think it actually looks kind of pretty. So I'm just gonna keep on going even if my colors do start to blend together a little bit. Not too worried about it. As long as they're not like blended like crazy. And I'm gonna do that all the way down until I finish up my teacups. So I'm gonna speed this part up again and then I will come back and show you what my final artwork looks like. just finished adding water to all of my sections and if there are any areas that you aren't super happy with like I'm not the biggest fan of this teacup in the middle what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this dry 100% and then I'm gonna go back in with my markers and do another layer on top of this after it dries and then I can add water to it and maybe I can try to fix up where it looks kind of like I scribble scrabbled. Maybe I rushed a little bit right there. So you can do that too if you've done this technique that I did today and you weren't super happy with the first results, let it dry 100% and then do another layer of marker and water on top of your first layer and see if that helps. Whatever materials and techniques that you decide to do today is completely up to you. However, your goal is to fill in all of the white space with beautiful, beautiful colors. And don't forget to do the background as well. So right now I'm gonna use my eyes and I'm just gonna look around and I'm gonna see I found a little white spot down here. So I'll just grab a little bit of water and try to fill all the white spaces in and then you will be done for today. I really hope you guys have enjoyed this project and enjoyed learning how to draw ellipses and this really 
cool stacked teacup masterpiece that we've created together. I cannot wait to see how yours turns out. I know it's going to be amazing because you guys are amazing. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.